Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello -y. my name is Loe. After my recent deep dive into Liminal Land, which I'll have linked down below in case you missed it, if you like theme parks you'll really like that video. Liminal Land is a fictional theme park that is the stuff of absolute horror nightmares, so of course I started thinking about real theme parks, specifically Disney theme parks. As you might be able to tell by the gigantic angel plush behind me, I'm actually a fairly big Disney lover. I love the theme parks. I wouldn't call myself a full-fledged Disney adult, but I also do have a wall of mouse ears. Oh dear god, is this like what the furries go through when they realize that they're furries? Am I a Disney adult? Listen, I really am just fascinated by theme parks, and I've always had a deep fascination with Disney theme parks in general. There's something about a company as large as Disney. I mean, Disney World is the biggest theme park in the entire world by like a landslide. Throughout the years, Disney has displayed this strange habit of just abandoning projects, abandoning entire theme parks to rot unattended for years, abandoning rides, and abandoning animatronics. For me, the abandoned animatronics are what crawl under my skin the most. There's something about a piece of technology like that, something that seems so lifelike that you know once moved and maybe spoke and and seemed so very alive, abandoned, and rotting away. I rounded up 10 Disney animatronics that were left abandoned, and some of these will truly ruin your childhood, so buckle up. Before we get started, a quick word from our sponsor, Toon Blast. Toon Blast is a free-to-play mobile game that is available on all devices, by the way, where you have to solve puzzles by blasting little cubes and obstacles out of your way. You do this by tapping the cubes that are the same colors all grouped together, or you can play it really smart and make a bunch of combos and stuff. I'm so into seeing how many combos I can get in a level. The Toon Blast puzzles are really fun, but I also really love the cast of characters characters. They're so cute. They feel like they're always rooting me on. There's like these little mini games where you get to rescue Bruno the bear. There are over 7,000 levels for you to play in Toon Blast, but listen, I'm on level 39 and I'm pretty proud of that. Actually, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was playing right before I started filming this video, so I'm just gonna see if I can beat it right now with you on camera. One of my favorite things about playing Toon Blast is trying to build up different combos. Like if I do this one, you can see it turns all of the red cubes into like those fireworks and ah, it's so fun to watch everything just blast away. Ooh, I think I got it. Yes, I beat it! Oh my god, with eight moves to spare, let's go. Download Toon Blast by clicking the link in the description box down below or scan the QR code on screen. And when you use my link, you get three hours of unlimited lives and 100 free coins, which is what you can use if you need a couple extra lives at the end of levels. I need them quite often. So once again, use my link down below or the QR code on screen to download Toon Blast today and get three hours of unlimited lives and 100 free coins. Thank you so much for using my link to download Toon Blast as well. It really does help out the channel so, so much. And thank you very much to Toon Blast for sponsoring today's video. Now back to the stories. Perhaps the animatronic that hits the closest to home for me on this list is the Stitch animatronic from Stitch's Great Escape. When I was younger and my family visited Disneyland, I went on this ride and it permanently scarred me. Don't get me wrong, I loved the show, but I was really freaked out. I mean, it's like a scary show, a scary experience for kids, and I was not the only one who thought that. This ride actually took the place of a ride that had been in the same theater before called Alien Encounter. And Alien Encounter is one of the very few actual horror experiences Disney ever made. Originally, it was going to be based off of the film Alien until George Lucas was like, hey, the xenomorph might be a little, uh, a little much for the children. But at the time, CEO Michael Eisner wasn't too phased by this loss of character implementation. He was convinced that Disney's Imagineers, aka the people who come up with all of the ideas for rides and experiences and all things theme park, Michael Eisner was confident not only would the Imagineers figure it out, but that it would remain a horror ride. 
Alien Encounter opened its doors in 1995 and it had no aspirations of tricking the general public. This ride wanted everyone to know what they had gotten themselves into. In the pre-show for the ride, there's this really cute little alien named Skippy and he's involved in a teleportation experiment gone wrong, leaving him burned to a crisp in front of Disney guests. On purpose. It's part of the ride. You can hear the little guy crying in pain before you eventually go into the theater to take your seat. So it's certainly a horror ride. However, it only ran until 2003. So this ride, Stitch's Great Escape, it takes place of Alien Encounter. And listen, it's pretty freaky in itself, but there are some really high-tech upgrades that come with this. The Stitch animatronic was actually like the most high-tech animatronic that Disney had ever made. It was like the peak of technology, and you could tell this animatronic was incredible. Clearly, Disney had a lot of faith in this ride if they went out of their way to build something like that. I'm sure it costs just hundreds of thousands of dollars, but they also put marketing material all over Disney World in preparation for this ride. On the day of opening, Cinderella's castle was even vandalized by Stitch himself, and you could see like cops all over Disney parks who were looking for our favorite little blue alien. It was a big deal. But, and you are going to hear me say this many times over the course of this video, uh, this was a massive failure for Disney. I mean, people just really didn't care about this ride. And on top of that, it had taken place of something that people really did care about. Parents didn't love the ride, kids didn't love the ride, and queues were often much shorter than 10 minutes. Like, nobody was going on this. Stitch's Great Escape opened in 2004, and in 2016, it began seasonal operation. So it only operated on the busiest days of the year. In 2018, it was expected that that would be the same. I mean, it had been for 2016, 2017. But then, photos leaked online of a truly disturbing sight. The animatronic Stitch had been partially dismantled and left abandoned inside of the empty theater that once held Stitch's Great Escape. Even though this ride was only operating seasonally, they were still using the front of the ride, like where people would normally like come in and stand in line, for meet and greets with a character Stitch. Disney World was using the front of the theater at the time for Stitch character meet and greets. Imagine if you just accidentally walked into the Stitch's Great Escape Theater only to find our favorite little friend in this sad and horrifying state. You can't tell me this is not like a Five Nights at Freddy's character. He is giving Springtrap Stitch's version. In 2022, Matt Sanswa posted Stitch's Great Escape in its current form to social media, and it was then reposted by Backdoor Disney. You can see that now Stitch is gone and is probably backstage somewhere or has been fully recycled to be used for parts for other animatronics. But the abandoned theater, years later in 2022, is crazy. It's always wild to me the way that Disney will just keep things exactly the way they are for years. They can just afford to leave spaces like Stitch's Great Escape fully empty, fully abandoned, without even questioning what's going to replace it. But that actually leads us into our second animatronic, and this is so very sad for me to say, but do you remember Skippy, our sweet little alien friend that I talked about earlier in the video? He got a second life in the ride at Stitch's Great Escape. A lot of pieces of Alien Encounter were recycled for Stitch's Great Escape. It was very clearly like a new skin on an old ride. But around the time that the Stitch animatronic was left abandoned, Skippy was found as well. And he, as you can see, was in pretty bad shape. Both of these animatronics disappeared from Stitch's Great Escape, but it's so sad to see them abandoned after seeing what the ride once was in two forms. Stitch's animatronic hurt, don't get me wrong, but Skippy had been around since like 1995. He was an old guy. So it's sad and unsettling to see him stripped down to nothing and abandoned like this. Our next two animatronics 
animatronics are actually technically four animatronics, but I'll explain. The Disney World ride of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea took place in these submarines where people could sit on either side. That means that all of the animatronics and all of the like props and stuff that are going past, there's two of each one and they're perfectly mirroring each other on both sides of the track so that no matter where you sit, you get a full view of the show. The ride allowed guests to see incredible sights such as buried treasure, polar ice caps, mermaids, but I want to talk about the sea serpents. If you have submechanophobia, I feel like this goes without saying, but this is going to be your worst nightmare, and you have been warned. 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea opened in Disney World in 1971 and then closed its doors in 1994. Well, temporarily at least. It closed in 1994 and then wasn't formally closed for two more years, meaning absolutely everything in the ride was left abandoned and underwater for two years. You might be saying right now, Lo, two years isn't that long. What possibly could have happened to these animatronics in that time period? But I'm not here to talk to you about the two-year abandonment. While the boats, the ride vehicles, were pulled out of the water around the time of 1996, the animatronics, props, and set would stay underwater until 2000 when the lagoon was finally drained. And as you can expect, after a decade of absolutely zero maintenance and just being left abandoned underwater, these audio animatronics showed a lot of wear and tear. And one animatronic that caught a lot of attention was the sea serpents. Again, there are two perfectly mirroring each other as twins on each side of the track. The twin sea serpents are in quite a state in these photos. I mean, just falling apart. They look pretty tough. But there's this blog called 20K Ride for people who are fanatics of the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride, where they have very well documented the decay of these animatronics in the months that were to follow. Before I show you the final state of what these animatronics would turn into, here's a video from Mike Karshti, who posted a full ride POV as it was in 1991. In it, we can see a shot of the animatronic serpents as they originally worked. It was a pretty simple animatronic. Really, I think just like the eyes would move so that guests could see it. It really was more of a statue. Here's another look at one of the sea serpents after a refurbishment in the 1980s, probably the last one this ride ever got. The lagoon had probably been drained at this point so that they could work on these animatronics and they looked really good. Now they're rotting, one without a head, and both of them just smashed to absolute pieces. When you see the size of these animatronics as well, it's unbelievable. They are huge and just falling apart, left there abandoned by Disney for over a decade. The sea serpent who is missing the head, by the way, apparently his head is in the hands now of a loving collector, so that's good at least. But that's not where our nightmare fuel from this ride ends. There were also these twin monster squids that you would pass by in your ship with glowing green eyes. The monster squids were a terrifying and very memorable part of the ride, and once again, they're huge. Much like the sea serpents, you can see in photos as the squids decay. In the initial images, they're clearly abandoned. Listen, the lagoon is drained. They look kind of weird, just floating above ground, also knowing how huge they are. But they're in fairly decent shape, you know? It's crazy that Disney would abandon a piece of technology and art like this underwater for a decade, but it didn't stop there. Later on in the squid's life, they were seen smashed to pieces, totally destroyed. Luckily, at some point, one of the squids had been removed and had been placed into the care of an Imagineer who wanted to take it home. So only one of the giant squids is absolutely smashed to bits in these photos. But isn't that crazy that not only will Disney leave like whole theaters abandoned with huge animatronics, these expensive pieces of equipment, they will leave leave them underwater. That just sounds like a fire hazard. Animatronics already underwater really freak me out. I think that's why submechanophobia is such a thing because machines do not belong underwater. It, something about it just doesn't feel right. But then you're leaving them under there unattended for a decade. Was that not like a safety concern? Either way, that's the end of 20,000 Leaks Under the Sea. 
And now we get into our next animatronic. And this one is from Country Bear Jamboree, a ride that opened in Disney World in 1971 and Disneyland in 1972. While the show does still exist in Disney World, it was replaced by The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh in Disneyland. There were two theaters for Country Bear Jamboree in Disneyland, so they had doubles of pretty much every single audio animatronic. Some of these animatronics were shipped to Disney World to be backups for their animatronics in case anything ever broke down. Some were recycled and used for parts. And some were given to the Walt Disney Archives. One set of animatronics, however, would have a different fate, that being the Max, Buff, and Melvin animatronics. They are all mounted head animatronics, like animal mounted heads on plaques that communicate with each other and the characters in the show and even the audience. A full set of these animatronics was actually left in The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, and if you turn around at one point during the dark ride, you can see Max, Buff, and Melvin up on the wall, just hanging out forever. However, one unlucky Max animatronic, that cute little deer, had been dismantled and left abandoned by Disney underneath the seance room of the Haunted Mansion. How exactly it ended up there, I guess we'll probably never know. But one thing is for sure, finding a decapitated deer head underneath the seance room of the Haunted Mansion had to be the scariest experience of whoever took this photo's life. Speaking of Haunted Mansion, my favorite Disney ride of all time, it's gone through a lot of changes at its Walt Disney World location in the last several years. One refurbishment came in 2011, and it changed the hitchhiking ghosts at the end of the ride from animatronics into CGI. Prior to this refurbishment, Disney used the Pepper's Ghost Effect, this really cool practical effect that utilizes a two-way mirror and light and animatronics, to show their park goers a ghost in their very own doom buggy that was going to follow them home. It was a great effect. I actually didn't know it was the Pepper's Ghost Effect until I started researching for this video. It's very convincing. The ghosts appear totally translucent, but the way that this is achieved is actually super cool. Behind the two way mirrors on a constantly rotating track were animatronics of these hitchhiking ghosts and seeing them backstage like they look crazy. After 2011, believe it or not, these were just left abandoned in the Haunted Mansion for some period of time. Some of the animatronics were actually auctioned off at Disney's D23 event later in 2011 and sold for a whopping $30,000. Hopefully the new buyer knew that these animatronics were rumored to be filled with uh, asbestos, but just imagining these half-bodied, ghostly animatronics on that track in the dark of the Haunted Mansion for God knows how long is terrifying, and maybe even more terrifying when you realize that you've only seen proof of three of them being sold. Where are all of the other hitchhiking ghosts? unless they've already followed us home. Oh no. All right, buckle in. You've heard this story, I've heard this story, maybe you haven't heard this story actually, but no matter what, I could not possibly get through a video about Disney's abandoned animatronics without talking about our dear friend, Buzzy. The ride Cranium Command opened in the Wonders of Life Pavilion at Disney World's Epcot Resort in October of 1989. This ride literally went on to inspire the movie Inside Out, and if you've seen that movie and then you see what Cranium Command looked like when it was still running, you can definitely see the similarities. It follows this group of characters as they try to control a human brain. The star of the show, the star of our hearts, is a little guy named Buzzy, and he's just the best little dude you've ever seen. Buzzy acts as the brain pilot for a 12 year old boy as he's just trying to get through school and life and having a crush. Buzzy does his job so well, he works so hard, he commands the left and right brain to work in unison to get this kid through the day. This honestly was a pretty beloved Disney ride. And even though I have no memories of Cranium Command, I truly understand why people were so fond of it. It has so much charm and character, and it never deserved the way that Disney left it to rot. It began operating seasonally in January of 2004 and then permanently closed its doors in 2007. After this, the attraction was left to rot in place for a decade. And yes, that means the whole attraction. 
including Buzzy. Buzzy sat in the dark of that auditorium alone with only his kind of like sidekick, which is this cute little robot, not nearly as complex as Buzzy, by the way, but this cute little robot who was named uh, Hypothalamus. The two of them just sat in the dark of this theater for years. In 2012, somebody actually stole Buzzy's cute little brown gloves. Many years prior, the rubber on his animatronic hands had started rubbing off. And so they put brown gloves on him for his shows. Somebody steals those in 2012, but you just see Urban Explorer photos of Cranium Command for years and years and years and years. And Disney honestly didn't ever seem to crack down on this. Buzzy was very well documented in his decay over the years. You can really, really, really see him start to fall apart. In 2018, however, yes, he was left abandoned until 2018 everything would change. That year, when Urban Explorers went into Cranium Command to get a little peek at Buzzy, they realized both he and the hypothalamus animatronic had been tagged to be sent to the Walt Disney Archives. Shortly after the discovery, Buzzy's headphones, bomber jacket, and hat all went missing from his animatronic. A police report was filed, although there are some kind of muddy um, details in it. The person who filed it didn't really have the best understanding of Buzzy's animatronic. So if you ever hear something about Buzzy's hands being stolen or something like that, it was the gloves that were stolen and that had happened like six years prior. A lot of conflicting kind of information. What you need to know is that at this time, Buzzy's clothes go missing. And then, Buzzy disappears. Photos surfaced and it honest to God looked like a robo crime scene. Hydraulic fluid was absolutely everywhere. You could see the wires that Buzzy had once been mounted onto were severed. This was not a job done by Disney. Disney would not have left this kind of mess or treated a $300,000 piece of equipment like that. Buzzy also weighed 300 pounds. It would have been really hard for someone to just sneak him out of that theater into the Disney park, right? Police would eventually land on a man named Patrick Spikes as a suspect in the disappearance of Buzzy. Patrick was a former cast member, and this was not his first rodeo in terms of stealing pieces of Disney property. He stole Haunted Mansion props and clothing that totaled a value of over $7,000 dollars. And as it later turned out, he literally sold them for a profit. Backdoor Disney is now under new management, and I believe it is Matt Sanswa who runs it, but previously it had been run by none other than Patrick Spikes. But just because Patrick had stolen things in the past was not why police wound up on his door. No, they wound up on his door because Milwaukee Bucks player Robin Lopez came to police in 2019 with Buzzy's bomber jacket, hat, and headphones, saying he had no idea they were stolen and that he had purchased them from Patrick Spikes. Patrick was arrested in 2019 in connection to the theft and reselling of Disney items, including Buzzy's clothing. But as far as I understand, he was not convicted of stealing Buzzy himself. If he had been, the restitutions he would have had to have paid would have been a lot higher than they were. Patrick took a plea to avoid jail time, got 10 years of probation, and had to pay back tens of thousands of dollars to Disney, Robin Lopez, and also an accountant in Winter Park Florida. Before he was arrested, actually only days before he was arrested, Patrick posted the most unsettling photo, just captioning it, Buzzy Head, on Twitter. And the fact that we don't see anything below the neck makes me think Buzzy is not in one piece. Which honestly makes a lot of sense. If somebody had to like smuggle out a 300 pound animatronic, a huge one, they would have probably had to have chopped it up. And God, why do you have our boy's head? Patrick, why are you posting our boy's head on Twitter? Just give him back. To this day, we don't know what happened to Buzzy and we probably never ever will. We're sticking in Disney's Epcot, which seems to have a lot of abandoned animatronics. It's probably due to all of the changes that Epcot has gone through over the years, the cancellation of rides, entire pavilions, so on. Horizons was the sequel to the Carousel of Progress ride at Disney and basically showed a glimpse into the future, or 
maybe what Imagineers at Disney thought the future could look like. It includes robots cleaning homes, all of these futuristic skyscrapers, and generally just has this like feeling of Carousel of Progress meets Meet the Jetsons. Horizons even had three separate endings that guests could choose depending on the future that they might want to see. It was a super cool attraction at Disney that ran from 1983 all the way until 1999. When it closed its doors, there were a lot of animatronics that needed to be recycled, rehomed, or just trashed. Some, of course, were left abandoned. Photos surfaced online of some of these animatronics shown crumpled in heaps on the basement floor of Carousel of Progress, actually. I have to imagine Disney used them for parts and that's why they were under Carousel of Progress. The animatronics were fairly similar. This is what those animatronics looked like abandoned. The yellowing on the body on like that casing is actually from age. At one point, those bodies were probably almost clear. Seeing them aged and dismantled and naked, it feels like Westworld, man. Just a tidbit that I find really interesting. I'm actually really into animatronics in case you can't tell. I I think they're really fascinating. If you look at the abandoned animatronics of Horizons and compare them to this animatronic of Mr. Abe Lincoln as created by Disney themselves, you can see that the body casing is super similar, but the Abraham Lincoln one is so advanced. This one is from 1963, believe it or not, and Horizons was obviously built around like the 80s. Those animatronics just had to do so much less than the Abraham Lincoln one does. Today, actually, that animatronic has been rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt. When you see this animatronic in action, he looks like a person. He's capable of standing, making really smooth, movements and looks so lifelike, it's kind of scary. Comparing the innards of this Abe Lincoln from the 60s with those of the Horizons animatronics, you can of course tell the technological difference and how little that they were programmed to do comparatively to something as insane as Abraham Lincoln. Still, while the Disney just left them to rot underneath the Carousel of Progress stage. So apparently the last two animatronics I have to share with you were so juicy that Michael Eisner himself somehow descended from the heavens and erased the clips of me talking about them off of my camera. So don't mind me just popping in to refilm those. Disney's Fantasmic Show opened at Disneyland in 1992 and Disney World in 1998. It's a self-described nighttime spectacular that utilizes a lot of practical effects. One scene in particular sees Mickey Mouse himself fighting off a very large dragon form version of Maleficent, who also is capable of breathing fire. Until 2009, this was just a really impressive puppet. But that year, Disney began to develop one of the most insane animatronics I've ever seen in my life. Disney engineered a 45 foot, 18,000 pound dragon animatronic. This animatronic was incredibly impressive, but if you're wondering how exactly it was received by the general public, maybe the nickname that the dragon received will tell you all you really need to know. It was lovingly called Murphy by many Disney fanatics after Murphy's Law. You know, the one that says anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. The animatronic was temperamental and the fire breathing effect only worked sometimes. It even fell face forward into the stage at one point and had to be fully dismantled to get it back upright and working again. But on March 22nd of 2023, during the 10.30 p.m. Fantasmic show, Murphy's fire breathing mechanic malfunctioned one final time. The animatronic's head caught on fire and it quickly spread to the rest of the body. In all of the clips that people took, you can hear people gasping when Murphy catches on fire. A lot of people didn't know if this was part of the show or not. Luckily, the Mickey Mouse performer was able to get off of the stage unharmed and the fire did not injure anybody. But by the time that the fire department was able to respond to Disneyland's call for help, it was too late for Murphy. The dragon was burnt to a crisp. The metal skeletal remains of this animatronic were covered with a tarp and cleanup began the next day. This was a really 
really terrifying event for park guests. Disney recognized how serious this was and that people could have seriously gotten hurt, and so they suspended all future shows of Phantasmic and have chosen not to rebuild the animatronic. Also, practical effects using fire, like the way that Maleficent breathed fire for this animatronic, all practical effects like that have been shut down across all parks just in an abundance of caution. And I think the reason why my original clip of me talking about this went missing is because I have a little bit of tea to spill here. This is not the first time this has happened. I know my camera malfunctioned, but I like the conspiracy theory better. In 2018, an animatronic of Dragon Maleficent caught fire during a parade in Disney World. While this animatronic was not nearly as complex or large as Murphy over in Disneyland, this was like the highlight of this particular parade. This was the Festival of Fantasy Parade, and this fire-breathing steampunk Maleficent was certainly the star of the show. And just like Murphy, this dragon's head caught on fire when the fire breathing effect went wrong. And this fire was in front of a ton of people. It had to be put out in like the middle of Disney World. I had to share that one with you because I know for so many people there is just this illusion of safety at theme parks. And there are tons of safety measures in place, especially at a place like Disney. But it just goes to show you anything can happen when you're using these gigantic machines to do things like breathe fire over a crowd of people. One last trip back to Epcot for the final animatronic of this video. Splashtacular opened to completely lackluster response in 1993. It was a futuristic show with very few Disney elements to it, and it was based off of a really popular show that was at Tokyo Disney Sea a few years prior. It just wasn't executed as well in Disney World. One part of the show that a lot of people remember, however, is when an evil sorceress uses her powers to summon a half dinosaur, half robo monster named Pterosaurus. He's a gigantic Tyrannosaurus Rex head on a metal body. I cannot believe this was at Disney. This thing is terrifying and I love him. But Splashtacular closed less than a year later and Pterosaurus actually got a second life as an Elvis Presley impersonator at a different show in Walt Disney World. But once that ended, Photos surfaced online of Pterosaurus abandoned behind the theme park. He's in a super sad state, his Elvis costume is gone, and he was so large they couldn't like put him into storage, they just had to leave him out backstage on the Disney lot. He was viewable for a while if you took one of these like backstage magic tours through Disney, then suddenly he disappeared. No one knows who this guy is now, and I guess he doesn't have the juiciest story after being formally retired, but he's so weird and cute, and I just wanted to share him with you. Fun fact, also, you can see his big dino head in this like bird's eye view of Epcot here, and I just love the fact that he would just spring out from behind the bushes. How many people are there who were scarred as children in 1993 when this massive robot dinosaur just popped out behind some bushes? There you all have it. That was 10 animatronics abandoned by Disney. I'm sorry if this ruined your childhood, but I did want to share so many of these with you. Let me know which one free to you out the most down below. Before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to my subscribers who are members of the channel. If you want to join the channel memberships and get extra members exclusive perks such as members only videos, polls to help me decide on future video topics, updates, diary entries, and so much more, you can click that little join button. It should be somewhere around the screen. We would love to have you. A special thanks to our VIP loves for your generous support of the channel. I love you very, very much. That's going to be it for me today, guys. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you once again to Toon Blast for sponsoring today's video and don't forget to download the game using my link down below. I love you very, very much and I will see you in my next video. Bye!